How y'all doing, baby? It's Saturday. It is Saturday. That's right, baby. It's Saturday. I missed Friday's Beer and Bud Friday. I'm terribly sorry. I apologize. Uh, things go on in life and you can't, uh, can't get around them sometimes. But it's a beautiful day down here in South Texas. I hope the sun is shining no matter where you are. I'm proud to look on my TV and see the protests going on around this nation still and need to continue. I'm, I'm proud. It makes me feel good, baby. But anyway, it's Saturday. It's a hot day. I've been saving this beer from Mike and Beverly Godfrey in Pono on the Hawaii, on the big island of Hawaii. Mike and Beverly, I hope you're enjoying your day, baby. I believe they know how to make beer in Hawaii, baby. Anyway... Wasn't here, but I assume that you carried on the tradition <coughs> even without me. So if it, if you didn't, <laughs> grab that beer, and put that bud in the bowl, and hell, let's get after this shit. Woo! It is indeed hot down here today. Well, what's going on, baby? Well, as usual, any time I have a, a lapse where I miss a day, well, I miss a day's news, a day's rant, a day that made me anger. So I want to recap a little bit. First off, down his little trip out, and yeah, his little uh, press, uh, what day, it was a signing of some bullshit, economic bullshit, that he's out there trying to take a, a victory lap for his economic gains in the stock market and how we're going to be great one day, again, and a bunch of other bullshit, but he invoked George Floyd's name. He said, if George was looking down from the heavens, you asshole, you disgusting little prick of a man hiding in your little bunker under the White House. No president in history has ever had to go hide in a bunker from the American people, Donnie. Just your chicken shit ass. Eh, but that's, that's typical. Hell, now he doesn't put up a bigger fence around the freaking White House. Nobody backed the wall up a little bit. He finally got his wall. It's the wall that he's building around himself to protect him. Doesn't give a shit about you. He'll send the, he'll send the military out there to bash your head in. That's what he wants to do. Or oh, Esper, I understand he recalled all active duty troops out of D.C. area. And Donnie's not going to be too happy with this guy. He stood up against him a little bit there about the Insurrection Act and everything. Esper, you ain't long for your job, and we all know why. Because the little coward will fire you just like he fires everybody who stands up and voices their opinion. Anyway, I was happy to see that the mayor of D.C., Renamed the road leading up to the White House there, Black Lives Matter Plaza. Big bold letters on the street, so Donnie, every time he takes off his little helicopter there, can look down and see it. He can see the fence, the, the barricade that had to be put up around him. The most hated man in America, baby. Well, outside of that cop and a bunch of other ones. You know, we are out here protesting and standing up for George Floyd, who was unjustly murdered in front of a crowd by an officer who seemed to take pleasure in it. But since America started going out in the street, we've seen, we've seen more. We've seen beatings. We've seen, we've seen old men get shoved down and crack their head open. We've seen young girls pushed to the ground, beat. For what? For what? Somebody gave you an order to move forward and beat the shit out of people? I say again, the law ought to be escorting them, not confronting them. But we see these acts of brutality. And even when they're captured on, now we have 57 officers up in Buffalo who have resigned their position from the special task force there because they're pissed off one of their officers got caught. There was no reason to push that old man down. There were no protesters around them. 
There was a lot of space there to de-escalate, but no. Boom. And that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. There's no reason for that. There's no reason for that. There's no reason to choke the life out of George Floyd, except you think you can get away with it. And now we have 57 officers standing up and saying, I'm protesting against this officer's charges. I suggest Buffalo get some more officers. I saw that crowd this morning out there applauding when those two officers walked out. Applauding. I didn't see any black officers there. Maybe I didn't look close enough. Say to me, a bunch of white officers out there just clapping their ass off. You got away with it, Bob. We won't stand for this. Go out and bash some more heads. Is that the, is that the message that the Buffalo Police Department wants to send? That those officers walked by him and not a one of them gave assistance? Are you shitting me? It's when good cops stand up for law and order. These cops get mad, baby. They're put in a situation, a desperate situation, but they're egged on. Push them forward. Push them back. You know, the Dallas Police Department came out and said that they passed a new policy in their department. It's called the duty to intervene. The duty to intervene. That's talking to law enforcement saying if you see something, you should intervene. A duty to intervene when you see an officer of the law getting out of control, getting a little too heavy with the club there, Bob. We support law enforcement when they are law enforcement. When they stand by the laws of this country like every other citizen in this country. The First Amendment gives those people the right to be in the street. It does not give you the right to beat them in the head until submission. Oh, but that thought comes up from your from your grand leader, the grand wizard up in the White House, the one hiding behind the, the wall in the basement, cowering like a coward. That one. Who tells you to get rough. Get rough with them. Get rough with them. Call out the military. Don't be a jerk. Dominate. We dominate. We dominate with our vote. We dominate the polls. And it starts in your town. It starts in my town. It's all over the freaking news out there. Jim Kalen. Jim Kalen of Nueces County, Texas. Of Corpus Christi, Texas. Ex-sheriff of Nueces County. Felt the need to share a post on his social media that the George, the George Floyd killing, the murder of George Floyd was a staged event to hurt Donald Trump's re-election. My ex-sheriff, who is currently, currently, the Republican chairman for this county. A disgusting man who decides to, to, to tread into Conspiracy theories, disgusting, lying, obvious. I met him once. I witnessed a, a, what I perceived to be a payoff from a towing company. I was there paying my, my fine of $400 because the company wouldn't accept ca uh, a credit card. They had to have cash. Of course they were good. And while waiting in the parking lot, I saw a little 10-year-old girl came out with a stack of money wadded up that tall. Handed to a guy in a SUV sitting next to me who had on a, a, a Nueces County Sheriff's hat. A stack of money. I called the sheriff. Hey, buddy. Jim Kaling came to my house. Showed me the pictures of the sick active duty sheriffs on there. Is this one of them? No. No, it wasn't. Oh, well, it wasn't. No. You don't think there's an auxiliary and everything else? Hell yes, he knew. Look in your neighborhood, baby. There's a little deal on the county and the sheriff there between the towing thing there. You know, get a little donation there every time you call up a cop to get your car towed. Depends on what company they call, you know. 
That's what I saw. And I reported it. Did anything ever come of it? No. No, Jim Kalen came out here to tell me I was mistaken. I didn't see what I saw. Now he's the re head of the republic. I'm telling you, liars, cheats, and thieves, and evidently racist assholes. Yes, it was racist for Jim Kalen, my ex-sheriff, the Republican Party chair here, to share such a disgusting post. But he's coming on TV. Hey, I'm not doing nothing. I just, you know, I'll put it out there for discussion. Are you shitting me? The last thing I told the little prick when he came to my house is that if I started getting pulled over every time I left my freaking house by some sheriff, it was going to become news, baby, every time. I never did. But I saw one post in front of my house yesterday. Two-thirds of America believe that Trump is wrong on race relations since the George Floyd murder. Two-thirds! Hey, you know who the other third are? Disgusting pricks! Don't want to forget this here. Fox. Fox Pews, bullshit mountain. Had a graphic on their fucking news about how great it is for black people to get killed. Yeah, look at here, when Martin Luther King got killed, the stock market jumped 3.9%. Look at here, George Floyd got killed. Look at here, the stock market jumped 3.9%. What's the freaking message there? What's the message there? That that disgusting excuse for a TV station, the anti-American bullshit crap that they put out on Fox Pews, Sean Panity and, and Laura Ingram and, and Tucker Carlson and all the other little maggots who strive every day to destroy this country. Well, they apologize for the insensitivity of putting up the graph. Yeah? Fuck off. Donnie went to Maine. Yep, Donnie went to Maine, you know, because uh, 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 Susan Collins up there, you know, she's, not, uh, she's on the fence there about Donnie now, so he went up there to, to let them know, hey, give me anybody with a pulse here. I don't care if they're good, they're bad, whatever they are, give me somebody, I'll endorse them. Because he doesn't give a fuck if they're good or bad. He doesn't care if they're a good man or a good woman, anything like that. No, give me somebody with a pulse, pulse I can put up against her. He went to go visit the Puritan Medical Products Company. Yeah, that company that makes swabs for the testing, you know. And Donnie being the big prick and manly man that he is, isn't wearing a mask. They show him there picking up. Oh, look, this is the one they put up in the nose. Look, this is the one. They had to throw all of those away because the disgusting prick wouldn't wear a mask and contaminated all of those swabs. No, he doesn't give a shit. They had to destroy him because the president was a prick and he wanted to come in without a mask on and, and stand over some lady that's got a, a, a hairnet on, a mask on, a whole clean unit on. And he comes waltzing in, spewing his shit and vomit out of his mouth. His vile, disgusting little Nazi germs that fall out of his mouth on a regular basis. It speaks volumes about the man. Every day of his presidency has been a disaster. The only people that are, are applauding are those people applauding Fox News about the stock market, baby. Look at there, baby. We're making lots of money. I saw a post the other day in the news where $564 billion has been added to the wealth of the top 1% in this country. Guess where that came from? Your ass. came from you and they stuffed it in their greedy little pockets
Today is June 6th, baby. You know, fee day. When Antifa, the anti-fascist of America, stormed the beaches of Normandy and marched right into the home of fascism. So while Donnie tries to spread the word of Antifa and left-wing radicals, no, baby, it's his cockroaches, it's his white supremacist neo-Nazi cockroach friends that are out there trying to trying to burn something down, trying to loot someplace, trying to break in, trying to create mayhem. That's those little cockroaches, baby. The majority of them. And the police are tracking them down. If you guys find them, are you shitting me? Little maggots. It's another day in America, baby, and I'm proud to see our people out in the street. I'm proud to see them standing for justice that has been denied for so long. It makes me proud. On June 9th, at 8.17 in the evening, 8.19, I'm sorry. At 8.19 in the evening. We're asking you to rise your flashlight. Take a flashlight and rise it to the sky. And celebrate George Floyd's life. Hold that light for the full amount of time that officer's knee was on his neck. And feel the weight of your own arm as you struggle to keep it upright for that amount of time. And then when you turn it off, when you turn it off at 827, the moment George Floyd died, consider what turning that light off means. And we're asking you to do this all by yourself. Nobody has to see you. It's what's in your heart that matters, baby. You could do it from anywhere. Show some respect and show some hope that things will finally, finally start to change. But change takes a long time, baby. So the journey won't be over with George Floyd's death. There will be others. And we must keep marching this, this, this protest. This, we must all stand up as Americans. Anyway, I'm sorry I missed Friday. Y'all take it easy. Have a good day. If you're out there protesting, God bless you. I appreciate it very much. All that kind of stuff. I love you for it. And uh, with a lot of that, maybe we'll, we'll change the world. Anyway, be back here on Sunday for our Blue Dot family meeting. I enjoy those. I enjoy talking to our Blue Dots. Y'all take it easy until then. <laughs> we'll see y'all later, baby. Y'all take it easy.